As the West espouses ideologies, China and its Belt and Road partners advance. In the short time since it was announced as a new initiative by President Xi Jinping of China in 2013, the Belt and Road Initiative has grown to be home to the largest piece of economic infrastructure in human history. We examined this project in a video entitled One Belt, One Road in 2019, but I think it's worth seeing what has happened since. In September 2021, the Silk Road Briefing Paper reported that the value of projects built to support the trading network totaled over $4 trillion US. While China was gaining partner after partner in this unique economic relationship, many Western countries were absorbed with linking trading relations to various social policies geared to alter the social, moral, and cultural values of nations as a prerequisite to continued or expanded economic activity. The result has been that many non-Western or developing economies opted instead to join the Belt and Road, which carried with it no demand to replace their culture with liberal Western ideas. Consequently, as of 2022, 147 nations have become a Belt and Road partner, representing a majority of the world's population. The members are now a global cooperative. Sub-Saharan Africa, 43 nations. North Africa and the Middle East, 18 nations. Europe and Central Asia, 35 nations. East Asia and Pacific, 25 nations. Southeast Asia, six nations, Latin America and the Caribbean, 20 nations. One of the latest newcomers to the Belt and Road is Argentina, which now seeks to deepen economic relations with Beijing and other participants, thus addressing foreign income shortages through enhanced trade and enabling of the export of raw materials and agricultural products, as well as improving foreign investment. Argentina's joining means nearly all major economies of South America are now Belt and Road members. We see the same story being played out in Africa, with the majority being Belt and Road partners. A significant step in this process occurred in November 2022 with the opening of a new gateway to Africa. An agreement was signed to start the development of a new superport at Bagmoyo in Tanzania. The planned size is breathtaking. The Asia Times in November 9, 2022, reported that this new facility will be the most significant construction project in the last four decades of Chinese-Tanzanian relations, with a capacity to handle 20 million cargo containers per year, hence more efficient than Europe's biggest port in Rotterdam. Tanzania in a very short time will be home to a port larger than any in Europe. It will be the Belt and Road gateway to 12 resource-rich, landlocked nations in Africa with a combined population of 300 million. It will be an export exit for billions of dollars of export resources and an entrance for Chinese goods. The Belt and Road is now consisting of a massive number of facilities, including superports, tens of thousands of miles of rail and roads, as well as pipelines between all continents except North America. There are those who may point to the debt incurred by China and its partners to date. But it must be remembered that this was the stage of infrastructure development. Some will point out that investment is tapering off but this is to be expected as projects near completion. The Silk Road briefing points this out. The China Development Bank and the Export Import Bank have already started to reduce loans. This is partly because the massive original infrastructure spend is now coming to project conclusion and the funding and build is now complete or nearly so. One reason that the Silk Road briefing now highlights projects that are coming to fruition and may now be exploited for commercial use. China and its partners are now planning to move from investment 
to return on investment. As employment is generated and the reciprocal market potential is realized. From the Chinese perspective, the project is now moving from the development of partnerships and infrastructure to one of sustained global development project, which is becoming its new moniker. The fact that to date 147 nations from at least four continents have bought into this massive undertaking means they have hopes that it can assist in generating increased prosperity and is one that does not demand social or political change. Sadly, many of the partners see the Belt and Road as preferable to that which is offered by the nations of the West. They see the latter as requiring change to the social, moral, and societal norms of centuries, and often demand that Western styles of governance be implemented. Clearly, the majority of nations are choosing a non-Western alternative, and may even soon adopt a non-Western currency of exchange. It might have been wise for Western leaders to consider that if they had been more respectful, things may be different today, as they watch resource-rich areas and developing markets choose a non-Western alternative. Maybe we of the West could have been a better example. Maybe we still can. Two millennia ago, one of the greatest scholars of his day wrote down some advice which, if it had been followed, would have resulted in a different view of the West and would have been very good for business. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Subscribe and click the notification bell to receive updates about new content. Visit tomorrowsworld.org for more articles, telecasts and booklets.